Good morning, traders. Today is the 26th of November, Saturday. I hope you guys are all enjoying the holiday weekends. I certainly am. I'm going to spend time with my family, uh, have spent time with my family, and today I'm going to take care of some things with my extended family. All is good. Lots of food, lots of fun, lots of rest, and we're getting to take a look here at the markets. Now, um, what I wanted to do was let me come here and here and here and here. So what we're going to do here, folks, is we're going to pay attention to the fact that the cash flow index has moved higher. We're in a downward cycle trend. So this is a pullback in a down cycle trend. Uh, we are nearing this critical resistance channel. We've broken above this channel. This is the cash flow index, indicating we're having some impulse buying, some early stage accumulation. But we're still in a downward cycle. We still haven't broken to the upside. And the consumer engagement index is weaker. This means that consumers are not engaging in the economy aggressively. We're not seeing general consumer uh, spending and engagement. We've fallen back to 2013 levels. These are extremely low levels. Uh, it, we could see without this consumer engagement moving upward, we're very likely not to see any real momentum to the upside. We might see a melt up uh, in U.S. stocks. We might see some consolidation near the end of the year. We are near a major cycle shift, uh, which is likely going to happen here in uh, early December, meaning but between now and December 10th, 7th to 10th roughly, we could see a cycle shift, which could prompt a, a new wave. Uh, I'm predicting to the upside, but it could obviously be to the downside as well with concerns. We need to just stay cautious. And then lastly, I wanted to show you the fear index and timing index has moved down into the lower quadrant. This means that we're back into kind of normal trending back over here. This is an indication that we should be expecting some sort of a melt up cycle. Remember, downward cycles typically move and are aggressively indicated with fear, moving above the first and second stage targets. Uh, the first and second stage targets are these lower levels here. Extreme fear is this upper level. We've gone through extreme fear twice here. <clears throat> Nothing like COVID, but extreme fear. Now we're back into these lower channels, meaning we should be expecting some sort of a melt up cycle to happen. We do not see any extended fear yet, uh, which is, you know, again, would be would be uh, uh, predicated on the sense that consumers are expecting some downward uh, cycle event to take place. Right now, it looks like traders and investors are expecting an upward melt up to take place. So we still are waiting for confirmation of this. Even with the VTI and the SPY here, you can see that we're trying to struggle and break above this channel. Once we get above this price channel, this downward cycle channel across these highs, then we're going to have some pretty solid confirmation of this. In fact, let me show you this chart here. Shows you that this is the custom U.S. valuation trend index monthly chart. And you can see that the U.S. valuation trend index has moved lower from basically uh, 2020. Um, so this is a, a scenario here where even though we had a big speculative rally, We've seen this downward cycle trend. We need to see this upward cycle trend take place. We need to see this shift into an upward cycle trend where we're actually seeing value and price appreciation. You can see we've had it back here. We had it back here in 2014-15, and then we stalled, and then we had some value appreciation here. Then we had depreciation or distribution here in 2000, this is the election, 16, 17, 18. Then we saw a big uh, upward trend here. So we need to see this bottom and start to move higher. Additionally, we need to see, not the fangs, not the metals, not the smart cash, this to start to move higher. We are flagging out in a sideways channel. So what this means, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are showing early signs of accumulation. We are in a sideways channel. We have not seen any big breakout. We could still move sideways uh, before we get a breakout. I believe we're gonna see a shift take place between December 7th and December 10th, which could likely move us into a new phase of trending into 
uh, Q1 2023 and Q2 2023. But right now, the markets are fairly fragile. They could revert to the downside, 4, 5, 6, 7 percent, or they could move to the upside, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 percent. Uh, and I'm betting, or at least I believe, the uh, trend is to the upside because of my custom index charts. But we could still have a reversion here in trend back down to these lower levels before we see some sort of a breakout. Remember, December 7th through the 10th, roughly, is still two weeks away. So two to three weeks away. We could still have some rotation before we get some big breakout. So now let's go back over to the custom index or the... Uh, uh, TT scanner hot list. We have very few new triggers right now. Everything is flattened out. I would call this a neutral bullish trend. Uh, understand that general markets are kind of weak. They are not trending upward. You can see this is the core inverse strata, uh, uh, TT scanner hot list. Everything is pretty well mixed. We have a, a bullish uh, signal here in VXY, uh, dollar sign V or SVXY, it looks like. We have bullish here in Chad, C-H-A-D. We have one trigger that's held uh, for two and a half weeks here, E-R-Y short. We have one trigger in T-B-X that's nine weeks long. Everything is fairly flat, though. Look at the percentage in profit, 1.5%, 1.4, 6.3. This one is many weeks old, 30-some weeks old. Um, these have hit both targets, um, and they have stalled back out. So the, the basically the triggers that we're having active right now are going to be somewhat flat. Uh, also understand this is a short trigger with negative thrusting, which is good to see. Very low profit factor, fairly high win rate. This is a long trigger with downward thrusting with a good profit factor and a great win rate. This is TMV, already hit both targets, 6.3% in the profits, close to the stop. Uh, actually, no, it's a little higher. Stop is at 116, entries at 119. So we're at 127. Um, downward thrusting right now, decent profit factor, decent win rate. These are still holding up. They, they're lasting. In other words, they haven't got stopped out. They haven't negated. So they could play out a little bit in our favor, um, but we're not seeing any real, um, real strength yet in the market. It's just neutral, flat, bullish melt up. Here's the core, TT Scanner core ETF hot list. Very flat, relatively mixed. We've got a, a number of bullish and bearish triggers down here. Things are changing. Um, you can see that this was predominantly bearish over the last couple of weeks. So we're getting uh, in uh, Amex consumer staples, DIA has turned bullish, uh, IBB, oil services, uh, healthcare, trust financial services, uh, water resources, uh, metals and mining have turned bullish, uh, IGE, uh, natural resources, uh, dynamic food. So you can follow along here. It's, it's a lot of um, commodities, a lot of consumer staples, healthcare mining, uh, biotech, uh, and then of course we have natural resources. So it's telling you that commodities are moving upward, certain sectors are moving upward, uh, and I believe that's associated to the strength in the Dow Jones uh, and the strength in the mid-cap 400. I think you're going to see a lot of these sectors move upward. Like, for example, the Russell 2000 has moved into bullish trending here. We don't have a trigger yet, but we're starting to see some bullish accumulation, which is early stage accumulation in these lower, uh, lower uh, priced or, or deeply devalued uh, ETFs. So you can see everything is longer term, 28 weeks, 29 weeks, 32 weeks, 41 weeks, 50 weeks. These are all older triggers. Um, they've been in place for quite a while. Um, it's interesting here with the marijuana sector. I think this might actually bounce next year, but we'll see. It's still in the short trade, 25% profit, 31% profit, 6.9% profit. This is kind of flattened out. So we got in at 25, we reached up to 27, it's up to 28 now, stop is at 25.52. This one's 39% profit and this one's 49% profit. I will again warn you that when the markets enter or exit this sideways neutral bullish trend, we're gonna get a lot of new triggers on these uh, weekly TT scanner hot lists. Uh, it's gonna be very exciting. Right now, this is doing exactly what I expected to do in a sideways flat market. 
is it got into a couple triggers over the past couple of months. Some of them worked out very, very well. Some of them terminated within, within a week or two. Um, and that's exactly what it should be doing. It should be realizing the markets are flat. It should be realizing there's neutral trending and it should be keeping us away from, uh, from unwarranted trade triggers right now. So everything is good. As far as I'm concerned, everything is good. It's doing what it's supposed to do. We just need to be patient and wait. Now let's take a look at the uh, TT Scanner main ETF hot list. This is our primary hot list, the one that I uh, base a lot of decision making on. The extras, the, the core and the uh, core inverse, and then the value hot list are designed to give you extra triggers, okay? They're designed to help you find additional trade triggers um, when the markets are, uh, are trending. When they're neutral, like they are right now, you're gonna see that everything is gonna stay relatively flat. We're going to get mixed trending. This is something that you can follow here, depending on how bullish and bearish everything is. And you can see we're sticking with longer term triggers that have been in there. That's the way the system works. And anything that is newer is either going to form into a, a longer term type of a hold or it's going to get out fairly quickly. So last week we had obviously a couple of triggers over here. We got out of uh, XLC, IYR, uh, uh, XLRE, QTEC, and SOX. Was no follow through in those trades, so we're out of them. The only trade triggers we have are in uh, Nugget, which is bearish. Uh, we've got 3.73% profit in that. XOP, which is bullish. We've got uh, 39, almost 40% profit there. And XLE, which is bullish at 49% profit, has hit both profit targets and stop levels are over here. You can see here that the uh, profit factor and win rate for these, profit factor is not the greatest on these, but win rate is okay. Anything above 1 point, say uh, 05, 1.1 is typically pretty good. 2.0 is, you know, pretty solid. 4.40 is great. Like this is, these are great numbers here. These are, this is something that has a very good trade rate, very good win rate, um, can rely on this successively here 0 0.97 and, and 0 point or 3.0 this is still this win rate makes up for the lack of uh, profit factor here so the way you look at these I've mentioned these many many times ideally you want something like this 1.02 to 2.71 or let me find another example here 0 0.9 times 9 and 2.0 these are good uh, balanced profit factor and win rate. When you get into something like uh, this, 0 0.37 and 1.0, this means it doesn't have a great profit factor and it's got basically a 50-50 win rate. Um, so this is something you need to be cautious of and resize your position. When you get something like this, 2.53 and 7.0, this is excessive. This means it's really quite solid. Uh, and we wait for a trigger here. When we get that trigger, when you get these profit factor and win rates, you can essentially rely on the fact that it's been a solid performer. So when you get into something like this, 4 point, uh, 0 0.46 and 1.22, it's got a very low profit factor with a moderately solid win rate. This is something where you should probably consider only investing 25 to 35, maybe 40% of your total, not total, but your allocated capital. So I've talked about this before, where if you have a trading style, uh, or an account, and say you had 50 grand in your trading account, you would wanna break that into 10 slots or more uh, after you pull a reserve out of it. So that'd be about, let's call it $4,000 per uh, slot that you would be able to allocate per, uh, for each of these trades. So when you're looking at these trade triggers, you're gonna to wanna to determine how you wanna allocate that money. With a 0 0.45 and 1.22 ratio, you would probably only want to allocate two grand or 2,500 to this trade out of your four grand simply because the profit factor and win rate is so, is so moderate. It doesn't show a high degree of success. This you would want to probably allocate, you know, the full four grand into. So let's take a look at these trades here. This trade here, 0 0.36, 1.22 would probably be about 25, 30% allocation. 0 0.45 and 1.09 would again be 25, 30% allocation, and 0 0.79 and, and 2.0 would probably be about 50, 55, 60% allocation. 
if I were to get to this 1.12 and 2.80, now that's closer to full 100% allocation. That would be four grand. Same thing here, 0.97, 3.0, that would be closer to the full four grand or 100% slot allocation. 0.82 and 2.0, that would be closer to full. This one, 3.68 and 6.50 would definitely be full allocation. So the way you look at it is you come down and you measure. You know, 1.02 and 2.71, that's positive, positive, maybe 80 to 100% full allocation, somewhere between, say, three grand and four grand allocation. 0 0.62 and 1.64, this kind of 1.64 makes up for the weakness here, but I'd still say this may be 50, 60, 70% allocation. Um, let's pick another one. Uh, we've gone on through that one. Here's... Uh, so uh, 3 point, 0 0.35 and 0 0.60, very weak. Probably 25, 30% allocation at best. 1.16, 2.83, this would probably be uh, 80 to 100% allocation because both are positive, both are above uh, the 1.0 level. And this, this is really near the, the minimum threshold of 0 0 1.05 to 1.1, but this is very positive. Um, this is more neutral, 55 and 1.12. That would probably be around a 50, 60% allocation. Uh, positive, so that'd be 80 to 100%. Positive, 80 to 100%. More neutral, 50, 60, 70%. 81 and 2.4. The 2.4 makes up for the weakness here. So this would probably be 60, 70, 80% allocation. This would be, look at this, uh, the 0 0.38 and 0 0.82. This would be 25, 30% allocation max, uh, 64 and 1.4. This would be 50, 60% allocation. Same thing here, 50, 60% allocation. Uh, maybe a little stronger, 50, 60, 70% allocation here, 89 and 1.88. You know, the way I look at it is if you balance out these two numbers, that's going to end up being about a 1.3, uh, 1 1.33. Um, so that puts it in, in a, a fairly consolidated uh, 50, 60, 70 percent allocation. Same thing here. It's when you start getting into these low, low numbers like this. So this is you add this together, you come up with about a 0 0.73 roughly uh, number. And that puts us into like the 20 to 30 percent allocation range. But either way, ladies and gentlemen, the markets are shifting. We're starting to get some bullish triggers. We're starting to get some early stage accumulation, but we're not getting a lot of uh, TT scanner triggers right now, which is what I expect. Markets move sideways. We haven't broken away from any side, uh, any real trends. We're not going to get a bunch of triggers. That's kind of how it works. Now let's come over to the value index. We have one new trigger here in SMJ, Smuckers, uh, which has a, let's zoom in, has a, uh, let me slide this over. Has a 0 0.42 and 0 0.83. Um, this is again, fairly weak. We've got moderately strong thrusting. Um, this would be given where we're at and given where these areas are, this would only be a 20 to, to say 30% allocation uh, we don't have any real strength in this trade yet. We have a, another trigger here that's a week old in Cummings. Oops. And let me drag this out. And Cummings is 0 0.54 and 1.35. This would be maybe a 30 or 40% allocation. It's one week old. We have another trigger in Amgen right here. We have a 0 0.45 and 0 0.91. That would be about 20, 30% allocation. We have another trigger here in MRK, which is 0 0.65 and 1.43. Now this moves us up into the roughly 50% allocation in MRK. And then we have another trigger in PFG right here that's three weeks old, 0 0.94 and 2.0. That puts us in the 70, 80, 90% allocation range. We're already up 6.5% and hit our first target. We have another trigger here in TRV, which is this one right here. And that's a 0 0.61 and 1.08. That would put us at about a, a 60 or 70% allocation. 
Uh, we have not hit our first target yet. We're up 3.04% or 3.84. And we have one up here that is a short in Hasbro, which is 0 0.38 and 0 0.92. You follow along here. This would be about a 30, 40% allocation. We have already hit our first target. We've already hit, uh, we're up 10.4% in the trade. Uh, and those are the newest triggers. All the other ones are older. They, they're trending uh, well. They've already hit both targets. We've got a protective stop in place. And remember, the way the targets work are, it's really up to you. But the way I explain it is you listen to my analysis, you get a feel for what the markets are doing right now based on what I'm telling you. And then the reality is, is I'm telling you the markets have been trying to find a, a wave four end or base starting wave five may move higher. Um, we're in kind of a sideways trend. We're in a weaker downside market. <clears throat> there is a lot of concern. You should be reading from my allocation levels, only 10% into stocks, 90% into cash. That means that you should be trading with small amounts of money and you should be very cautious and protecting your capital. Um, because of that, now, how would you address target one and target two? Target one in these types of scenarios would likely be 50% of the position. Target two would likely be about 25% of the position, letting the rest 25% run with your stop. When we get into real trending, where let's say I'm telling you everything's going up, looks good, my custom indexes are telling us that everything should not be you know, trending upward, we're in a solid uptrend, and we get a bunch of long triggers or we get some inverse short triggers that are in line with the direction of the market, then you may consider using this as a 33% target one, and then a 33% target two, and then a 33% stop, or you could do something along the lines of a 30% target one, a 40% target two, and then possibly a, uh, that would put us at 70, then a 30% uh, trailing stop. The idea is you wanna lock in these profits to lock away gains and protect your capital. You use the allocation levels based on the, the profit factor and risk, uh, uh, sorry, win rate. Um, and the idea here, ladies and gentlemen, is that you execute efficiently based on what I'm telling you, followed by my market analysis, my trend analysis, and my custom charts so that you can protect and still trade uh, your capital, protect your capital and trade, but not take excessive risks. When the markets finally settle and move into a solid trend, we are going to get some really good upward movement and we are going to get some really big trends that are going to work out very, very well. This, the fact that we're seeing, even in this value list, a lot more bullish signals now down in this list, this tells us that we're getting very close to uh, potentially seeing the markets move away from this weakening downward trend and into some sort of a new upward trend just going to be a matter of time here. So remember, I'm trying to help you with these triggers to help you understand what's going on and figure out how we're going to move this forward. Okay, that's it for the hot list. I'm going to do another video um, highlighting what to expect. I just put up a Thanksgiving video. You guys all need to watch this. Uh, it's, it's very important to understand the markets are at a very fragile point right now. Uh, with low volume going through the holidays, we could see some mild volatility but I want you to also understand that the, in my opinion, we're still in that melt-up phase. So barring any crisis, catastrophic event, we should continue to melt upward and go from there. All right, guys, talk to you soon.